Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to upgrade the iOS system image on your Cisco router or switch. First thing that you need to do is get the new software image. So you get that from the Cisco website at https software.cisco.com. Let's have a look there. So you land on this page, click on the link for software download and then that will open up a new tab and it's searchable in here. So in the search box, put in whatever it is that you want to upgrade. So let's say we want to upgrade a 2960 switch. I put that in, I then select my model of switch. I can then select the iOS image that I want to download from there. So download it from the Cisco website and then copy it onto your TFTP server. Then, from the TFTP server, you're going to download it to Flash on the device. Once you've got it on Flash, then either delete the old image, leaving just the new one there, and the device will now boot up from the new image, or if you want to keep both images on there, just in case you need to fall back to the old one, then to make sure that it uses the new image, use the boot system command. So let's have a look at doing this in the lab. Same lab as last time. I've got a switch this time. We're going to use the switch at 10.10.10.2 and we're going to download a new software image from the TFTP server at 10.10.10.10. .10 so let's go on to the switch and check what software image it's running right now. So if I do a show flash, you see there's only one system image in there, which is running C2960 LAN base MZ 12.2-25. And if I do a show version, not surprisingly, because that's the only system image in flash, that is confirmed as the software image that we are running. So we're gonna upgrade this to a newer version of iOS. So let's have a look at the TFTP server now. And I can see I've got version 15.0 for the 2960. So this is the image that I'm going to use. So I need to download that to my switch. So I'll go back to the switch again. And the command I want to use at the enable prompt is copy TFTP to flash. The TFTP server is at 10.10.10.10. .10 the file name, I've already copied this into my clipboard, hopefully, so I'll try pasting it. Yep, there it is, that was a 15.0 image. I want to keep it the same name when I copy it to Flash. So there it is, copied into Flash now. I'll verify it's there with a show Flash, and now I can see both the current and the new system image. What I could do now is I could delete the old one and that will guarantee it will boot up with the new one next time. But let's say I want to keep the old one there just in case I need to fall back to it. I'm gonna keep it there to make it easier to do that in case I need to. So I need to do the boot system command now. So I will copy the name of the new system image and then at global config, I will enter the command boot system and it's on flash colon and then the file name paste that in and and copy run start and i should be good to go now now when the system boots up it loads the system image into ram memory so i need to reload to reload into the new system image so i will do that now I will do a reload and you can see the message there that yes, it is loading the new system image. So that looks all good, but let's just wait for it to boot up so that 
fact, we can confirm. Okay, there we go. I'll go to the enable prompt, show flash. You'll see that both images are still there. And if I do a show version, I am now running version 15.0. Okay, so that's all there is to it. That's how you do an upgrade of iOS on your router or switch. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.